Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Basement. I'm your host, Lex Rhodes, and I'm here with Brody Thomas. Brody, say hi to the people. Introduce yourself. What kind of music do you make, and what do you do? Hello, people. I am Brody Thomas, and I make primarily like alternative hip hop and alternative pop music. Sort of beat poetry, kind of just write lyrics, make a beat, make it work. And that's it. It kind of just comes out of writing all the time, making beats all the time, or playing guitar, whatever it is, kind of just making music, putting them together, and hope whatever comes out of that. When you first started, what came first? Because I know for me, it was always the lyrics and trying to write the beats was the hardest part. What came first really for you? Lyrics is always first for me because they're kind of just like always going, you know? It's not so much like, oh, I'm working on this song. Sometimes if I'm like sitting, like probably like everyone, you get like four lines in your head and you're like, all right, gotta jot it down. And then it took a while to be like, oh, I'm making a song today. It was like, oh, I made this beat. Oh, I have these words. Let's go. The first time it kind of was like, let me make this beat around these words. That was when it was really cool and fun. When do you struggle with writer's block or something like that? <sighs> Typically the cause is probably just trying too hard. It's the times when I'm like, let me write a song about this. It's like so hard. It's like, hey, let me try to write a song about a specific topic. You just can't. Yeah, you have like, to get the inspiration for it somehow first and then it just all kind of comes. That's why I like rap and like hip hop so much because it's so like, oh, this isn't working. Cool, let me just put on a beat on YouTube and smoke a little, just kind of go, you know, like it doesn't, it's so pressure free. When it comes to like weed and all that, do you ever find that it inhibits your songwriting? When do you have to like remind yourself, hey, it's, it's not always helping? It's when I try to make music uh, on any drug besides weed. <laughs> I can't, like the first time yeah. um, me and Andrea ever, did shrooms together and I was like dope you know fucking I'm the Beatles now like this is gonna be sick I'm gonna trip probably write a masterpiece it's gonna be amazing I'm gonna paint a million pictures like we brought this notebook and everything and it's like obviously we're gonna produce so much art on this drug I didn't know what it was like yet and for me still anytime I've done any sort of hallucinogen anything besides weed really my motor skills are affected enough like I'll try to play a guitar or something and it's just like I was excited to talk about this because I had written a bunch of songs, like I was saying, like angsty, you know, sing songs. And then I made a record called Jellyfish Things and Sunburns in 2018. That was the first time where I fully attribute that record where I was like, all right, I'm just gonna like eat a bunch of edible, like more than I would normally eat, really get into that edible world, you know, like different than smoking and then put headphones and just lock in. And it changed everything. I made this whole new sound. I like made these two songs in the first day and I was like, this is it, I'm gonna make this album. It's gonna be everything. As much as I can't produce anything really on hallucinogens, the experience like the next day is always like, oh cool, let me write about, I'll remember stuff still. It's not like I just forget. So the experiences will give me things to write about, but it's never immediate. If you're not mentally there, if you don't have a hand on like just your everyday social life and everyday like work life, it's just like alcohol or any other drug, it becomes a crutch. Yeah, definitely. And That's what I always think about when people talk about weed not being addictive, where I'm like, the people saying that are the people smoking like eight times a day. It's cool to admit that it's not, what do they say? It's not physically addictive, I think is what it is. It's mentally addictive. Yeah, which is real. Just doing a little bit is a lot sometimes because then it can yeah. lead off to so many things. This happens to me sometimes. I'm high writing music, listening to like the same loop over and over, trying to add like another layer. Does it ever start sounding like nothing to you? And like it starts sounding bad, and you just have to walk away. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, or it's kind of becomes similar to before, like with that writer's block, but it's almost hearing block. If I go in with really no plan and I'm just like, this will work. Sometimes it just completely doesn't, obviously. And I'll be like, I can save it by adding more. And then it just, yeah, it becomes like this big mess. And I have so many files on my laptop, it's just like, IDK, IDK, IDK. That's why for me, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, especially when it comes to like, if you're doing a word heavy like hip hop, like well. boom, tsh, boom, tsh, you can make a whole song with you. I feel like for me, it's it's almost like so specific word wise, but like so buried metaphor wise that like, I, I'll hear, I'll hear my own song and be like, damn, that line is my favorite. That's so sick. And then I'm like, shit, no one will ever understand it. Possibly. Ever really. Maybe they will. May it, like it takes a one moment where you're like you're listening enough and you're just like, damn it, I didn't realize like I shouldn't have. Oh, that's not deep. Like that's not metaphoric enough. Or I don't know. I have this weird fear of like being too blunt. I've got a big <clears throat> like part in my brain that's telling me to make something relatable and like catchy, 
and then a big part of me that's like fuck no fuck that it's like a stream of consciousness almost it's like that was me and that was that day and that was that song and it's great to me but i know like pfft, that'll never be whatever on the radio or i'm sure everyone thinks about the same but it's like hard to balance being unique but also being marketable. It's almost not about the music anymore, yeah. which is why I want this to be a thing. It's about the music and it's about the people behind them. Yeah, now I feel like people, especially with social media and stuff, like people are their own brands. That's doing a whole mess of weird stuff where it's like, you can have like a million followers just for being hot. And then, then it's like, I've got a million followers. I should probably make a song and they'll listen because they're my followers and then they will so it's like skews the market it makes like listens and plays not really as valuable what, what's a good moment or what's a, a struggle that has helped shape you or your music Ooh, that's hard the good moments will kind of make their way slower where it's kind of like they're the backdrop because then they set the contrast for when something is bad like i try to express the things i'm thinking and maybe find out that people agree or kind of also just not care, just get it out and ask it. And like, it's a lot of questions. It's a lot of like, hey, hopefully people will relate to this, but like, what the heck's going on? Being a human is crazy, right? <laughs> and then throw that at the wall and see if it sticks. I wish I had a better, like, uh, this changed my life. And then I started writing songs. <laughs> but I think that's what you said. Like, it's almost like those good moments, like you almost can't pinpoint those because they are like kind of the backdrop. Like it's when those difficult times happen that you think back on those good times yeah and think back on like the motivation like that's what you use has there ever been like a single struggle or moment like that i guess you call it anxiety or something just like sitting getting wrapped up in thought you know just thinking about whether it's big like you know what does it mean to be a human being i spend a lot of time questioning if everyone's experience is actually similar or not i'm always wondering like what are other people going through like i would just yeah. love to like see someone else's life from their vantage point yeah it's like because like in a way you are but you also aren't. And like that idea, I believe can just be dissected till the end of times. It's important to remember that songs are often written as a reflection. Brody, is there anything you wanna, you wanna plug? You want, got any songs, got any projects? Let's see, I do. Uh, world's best rapper, Lil Lil, is putting out a mixtape. I've been backing him since day one. His voice might sound familiar if you listen to Brody Thomas's records. Uh, last record was This Is A Bad Haiku. Jam it, it's cool. I listened to it all the way through this year again and still like it, so you will too. And Brain Mind Clothing coming at you uh, very soon. Wow. Spring 2021, Brain Mind Clothing. Follow, like, do all the stuff. And that's it, making music and chilling. <laughs> we will throw all those links down in the description. Brody, thank you so much, my man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Stay tuned, we're about to reset up and Brody's gonna play a nice little small acoustic set for you guys. The song is called Seeing Double. And it's about seeing things from another point of view, admitting you're not always right, and being okay with that. <laughs> Do I 
Among the Stars, I think, is probably the name. <laughs> I think we know damn well that there is no heaven or hell. It's something that we tell. Makes us feel better about the ones that are gone To imagine them just having fun somewhere out there beyond This plane of existence, terrestrial earth We created space where they'll never feel hurt And I think they are
Thank you so much for watching episode one of The Basement and thank you so much to Brody Thomas for joining us. It was such a pleasure and we hope you enjoyed it too. Don't forget to check out Brody's Spotify page as well as Brain Mind Clothing. I know I'm gonna be ordering a shirt. Make sure you guys order one as well too. It's dropping this spring. Um, don't forget to like the video, say hi in the comments and subscribe. Our next guest is the amazing band Weird America. So don't forget to subscribe to get notified when that gets dropped. The Basement is a crowdfunded project that would not be possible without support from our amazing and generous donors, so thank you so much to every single one of you. I am your host, Lex Rhodes, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Basement.